this is Dave with NTI Boilers and today we're going to go over wiring your new TFTN boiler. So in front of me I have a boiler that's already been installed, piped in, uh, the air has already been bled and we're ready to get this thing fired up. So I have my line power coming in, uh, verified that the power is shut off for safety reasons. Uh, I've got a zone circulator here and I've got my primary boiler circulator here. So we're going to wire each of these in one by one. We're also going to look at our low voltage connections. So from the factory, this jumper wire is left hanging loose. And that's because this is your zone input. So this decides whether you're going to get, if you wired R, 24 volts to come out of your zone 1, 2, and 3 pumps, or if you're going to get 120. Now that's going to depend on whether you're using zone valves or zone pumps. I'm using pumps, so I'm going to jump this over from zone input to 120 volts. Now that that connection is made, I'd like to look at the thermostats next. So from the factory, for testing purposes, each of these zones is already jumped with a factory jumper wire. These can be pulled out and removed. You can then take your thermostat, remove the jumper wire and wire your thermostat either between R and W if you want just a standard dry contact. If you have a power stealing thermostat like a Nest or uh, an Ecobee, you can use R, W, and C so that you can power your thermostat. And you'll want just a little technician screwdriver and basically all you're going to do is just loosen up the screws, remove the factory jumper and insert your thermostat wiring and plug it into the appropriate contact. It's best not to have any of your thermostats connected until after you've check the boiler, turn it on and make sure that water's flowing. Just in case there happens to be air in the system still, you don't want to accidentally dry fire the boiler. So I like to leave these out until I've got everything turned on, pumping, and I can hear that the air has been removed. Next, we're gonna take our line voltage connection. I'm gonna pass that up through into our junction box here. The ground, just use one of these ground screws. These are an eight millimeter or a five sixteenths. So that's the easiest tool to use. You can also use a flat bladed screwdriver, but this is much easier. So we'll snug that down. Next, we're gonna take our line. We're gonna connect that up over to our line voltage. And this is gonna supply power to the boiler when the power switch here is turned on. We're then going to hook up our neutral connection. There's two wires for neutral side by side. This is because you may need to use extra neutrals. So we're going to loosen that off, connect up our power. Next, we're going to connect our zone circulator. Now I'm going to be using zone one. So that's the gray connection here. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna take line voltage from zone one, we're gonna connect from the neutral back to neutral and ground is gonna go to ground. in there, tighten it down so you get a nice secure connection. Our neutral is going to tie back to one of our neutral connections that's left available. And our ground. Now for our boiler pump, we're going to wire this back to auxiliary pump here. And we can either set that as a system circulator, which means that it runs for central heating calls and can be shut off for domestic, so you may want to use it that way. Uh, or if you wire to the boiler pump connection, that means that you have a primary boiler pump, which is the application I have here. 
and anytime the burner operates for heating or hot water, you want that pump to run. So that's the pump connection we're gonna use. But again, if your system is set up so that you need a circulator to run only for central heat, then you would use the auxiliary pump connection for that. So we're gonna start, we'll hook up our ground connection. connection. The line is going to go to the boiler line connection right here. And with your boiler pump, domestic pump, aux one and aux two, we've provided a neutral connection for the pump. So you're gonna bring that in right beside and click on or connect on to the end for neutral. Now that we have our pump connections made, the next thing you would wanna look at is your low voltage connections. Auxiliary NTC one and two, these would be for system sensors um, or domestic hot water recirculation sensors. You've got OD NTC for your outdoor sensor, DHW switch or NTC. Uh, this means you can use an Aquastat or a tank sensor and you would wire that to the two connections on the red plug here. If you have a variable speed pump, you have an output for that. You also have inputs for zero to 10 volts, outputs for zero to 10 volts for your building management system. If you have an auxiliary safety limit, such as a flow switch or low water cutoff that has to be installed outside the boiler, remove the factory jumper, put your device here and plug it back in. And then there's an alarm contact here that will close if for some reason the boiler goes into some sort of lockout condition. There's nothing wired there from the factory. You would just connect your device here and we're gonna close a switch to activate that device. Once you have everything connected, turn the power on to the boiler and then you can put the programming and set up. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for watching the video today. If you'd like to check out more videos, see the link below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for all the future updates. And also check us out on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram.